Hi everyone, Summer with the Starry Sun, and I want to talk to you about the rainbows in this deck. We're gonna gonna go on a a deep dive rainbow style <laughs> with this deck. I was I got this deck. I don't know last year or something. It was released by Los Carabeo, 2021. Sorry. 2021. Uh, they give you like a little white deck. It's definitely a fairy deck or a little white book. It's definitely a fairy deck. And in here, they don't give you much. Like the card meanings are little white book card meanings in, you know, different languages like Los Scarabeo goes. However, there is something really important to take into consideration when it comes to this deck. And it's right here. Look to the rainbows for clues in where to focus the card's meaning and energy, okay? The other thing to consider is right here, it says, consider that rainbows are made of light, uh, but that same light is composed of different colors, just like real truths are only found by combining different energies, perspectives, and points of views. All you have to do is believe and look for what is at the end of the rainbow. So rainbows play a huge part in this deck, obviously. It's named after rainbows and it has the rainbow stuff in it and every card has some form of rainbow in it, every single one of them. So first off, <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. We are going to, um, we're gonna have to break this down kind of into parts, okay? I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible without uh, making this awful, okay? We, um, so here's the here's the thing. We need to consider where the rainbow's at and what it's telling us, right? But I'm not going to go into exactly what it's telling us just yet. I just want to show you where the rainbows are at and how the difference in where the rainbows are makes a difference in what the card meaning might be. Here, the rainbow is behind, right? Well, the other thing is the traditional rainbow is not necessarily here. There's actually only one card I have found that has the actual traditional rainbow in it. And by traditional, I mean red to orange to green to yellow to blue to um, indigo to violet, okay? The other cards do not do that. See, the ends in blue here and, and it has the green here. Th this is the only card that has the actual traditional rainbow colors in this top to bottom form, okay? So rainbows are interesting because that's the way they are always. However, sometimes there can be like a double rainbow and that double rainbow will give you an inverted rainbow. So you would go the bottom to the top. So you would see the colors from the bottom to the top instead of the top to the bottom in reverse order. So that's also very interesting, but I didn't find very many cards that had the reverse order necessarily. I did, however, find a bunch of other interesting stuff that has to do with these rainbows and where they're at and what they're doing, okay? Uh, rainbows, are the key to rainbows in real life is they are based off the person who is viewing them, their, their orientation, where they're at, how they're viewing it, their perception. That's why you can't really ever find the end of the rainbow because it's based off where you're viewing it from and it just doesn't work out, right? All right, so this one's behind. This one's behind and above. This one's actually coming out of her finger, so it's not behind, above, below, in front, or anything. She's not even wearing it. This one is actually in front of her and on the mirror. I'm assuming this is a mirror that she's holding, there, and there's no other rainbow in this card, okay? This one is also coming out, okay? This one is being worn, and you'll see it's not traditional rainbow style at all. It kind of goes left to right, Kind of, because you kind of see the purple up here too. So it kind of isn't, it's not quite right. And I think that's something to consider. This one here, also not the same, but it's a reflection. It's like reflecting light off of where the sun is and the clouds are coming in and stuff like that. So I think that's important too to consider. Up here, the rainbow is actually inset on the top of the carriage. In this one, it's on physically as a design of this beast's head. And this one does not go, okay? This is the, the way the rainbow usually goes in this deck, but it does not go the same. This one is inverted. This one's inverted. So I think that's really, really interesting to consider uh, when reading the cards. This one right here, like I said, is the only one that is the traditional right side of the rainbow. This one's like kind of like in her wings, but also in the uh, butterflies that are coming down around her. This one is in the swords, and it's a pale version comparatively. 
However, the purple is very um, prominent in this one. This is kind of traditional, but it's left to right. Um, and I don't mean traditional as in, uh, I mean traditional as in it, there's there's uh, money at the end of the rainbow, like you can find the end of the rainbow. So this being the hangman is a really interesting perspective and it goes left to right. Uh, yeah, or no, it would be, yeah, it'd be left to, no, it'd be right to left because the purple is always kind of on top. But in this one, it's kind of right here and the pink is on top. And then on the bottom is like the orange yellow color. So that's interesting. And the red's on this side. That's So I think that's something to consider um, when you're, we're looking at these cards. This one, it's kind of like a reflection of the background of what's going on. And it's not, not the colors are all there, but they're there in different um, shades. Here, the rainbow is right here. And it goes does it go the same way no no it does not go the same way as the hanged man this one goes the green which is down on the bottom over here is on the is on the right hand or left hand side and the purple is on the right hand side here it's on his hat but it is not inverted even though this is the devil card which is interesting right that is not a reversed rainbow direction it is the correct upright direction this one is up here in the lightning and it is, it's not uh, the right direction necessarily because the green's kind of in the middle of this lightning. So it's interesting where the colors are and how dark they are or not. These are like a paler version. This one's in the stars and again, green to um, the violet. This one is up in the sky, like a reflection off the moon and the sun in the background. Whereas the other card had it like literally coming out from the clouds and stuff. This is definitely a representation of the sun being back behind where the moon is, which I think is really interesting. I feel like that's back behind where the moon is. So it's like illuminating things that wouldn't be illuminated, right? Even in rainbow form. So I think that's really cool. And then you have the sun one. Like there's a huge difference between that. I think. <laughs> and the reflections are muted here where they are not on this one. They are much stronger in that card. This one, it's in the strings. It's in the strings of fate. Like this is, uh, and, and then this one is below and behind the water. Also not inverted. It's got, it's going the same directions for the colors. So I think that's really interesting. Okay. Now it gets even more, um, how do we put this? It's not complicated, but it's definitely more, it's a deeper thing going on, okay? A much, much, much deeper thing going on. So I did find, I was very curious, I did find um, a place, and I will leave a link down in the description, that talked about the quartz cards being connected to Major Arcana and the ways that they are connected to the Major Arcana, okay? So I just wanted to... Uh, <laughs> Talk about the court cards for just a second. So I'm going to take I'm going to take the fool out for a moment so we can focus on we're going to focus on the magician, okay? We're going to focus on the magician and what cards seem to be associated with the magician, okay? And we are kind of going to go this one has it going behind and it's got the um the leaves and stuff in the head. And the facial features are similar. They're both old men. One just has a longer beard than the other. So I find that very, very interesting in this card. Very interesting. So there's an association there, I feel like. And then, let's see, is there another one in here? I don't think that one fits with it or that one. So this one is also behind. Um... But I don't feel like it associates as strongly with the magician, even though the rainbow is behind. The rainbow is also not as dark as it is in the magician in this one. It's a much lighter color. And this one's kind of like an in-between the two of these. So that's very interesting to me. Very interesting to me. Uh, so yeah. So there's a lot, of, a lot of things to play off of here, which then leads me, okay, because your court cards can really like talk about what's going on too. Like if... 
the king energy mix or not the king energy yeah it would be the king energy the king energy mixed with the magician right because that king has been through some stuff the magician has all of these things at their disposal and that king energy really plays off of that the magician's in like this big 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 energy way and the king is not quite you know um it is minor arcana, but it's not quite minor, minor arcana, right? It's court arcana, which is kind of in between minor and major. And that has this in-between stage of maturity, I feel like, before you reach the master level, but not quite, you know, back into the page level or the zero level of something, right? So I think that's really interesting to um, consider when you're playing majors with court cards. Now, like I said... This is a lot to really dive into and I'm trying to get through it in a quick manner so you can definitely dive into this like really, really hard. And if you want me to dive further into this in that way, I can. <laughs> but um, but do consider that that would make, make a, a long video. It would make a long video and there's a lot to cover. So then the next thing to cover, okay, is also interesting. Um, if we look at one, right, the one card, this is one magician. That's the ace, also behind, but doled. And then we can go with the next ace, also behind and doled, but they're all going in the same direction still, okay? And then we can go with the next ace, which is the swords, right? Behind and also doled compared to the magician and even the king, of course, all going the same direction. And then the last ace, let's find the last ace here, is this one. And it is behind the trees and up top as well. This is one is like below the cup. This one's like in the middle. And then these two are up high on the um, aces. So I think that's really interesting to consider where the rainbows are at in each individual thing. So for me, if I was going to associate, say, this major with the minor, like in a reading, I would consider that it would be more plausible that these two cards would have a stronger magician feel for them, you know, stronger association to this magician just because of where the uh, rainbow is in the card. And I think that's really important to note. And this rainbow is much darker than this one. So, and then I would even go as far as to say this one is more associated. Okay, plus the leaves at the top, right? But all of these in this card, by the way, if you want to boil it down even further, okay, if we want to go even further, you have the vines down here in the magician for this ace, okay? You have the two little things right here. <laughs> I don't know what you call them right here, but they're like leaf things and they're on both of them at the crown, okay, at the crown. And the way that um, he's holding this candle appears the same way in both of these aces, okay? And then you have the mountain here, which you have the mountain in the background right here, okay? And then if you move into the um, Ace of Cups, <laughs> you've got vines in the Ace of Cups, right? Which kind of play a part. And then you have, obviously the cup and the way the two sides are coming down. So you've got the two mountain sides here and then you've got these two sides right here where the waterfall is. So I find that really, really interesting to uh, work out in how it plays out in the cards. And then you have the greenery like right down here at the bottom, which kind of matches the greenery in this ace. So I find it really interesting like how you can kind of play all of them off of each other, okay? And then we can get even more complicated. Are you ready for this to get even more complicated? Because it's about to. <laughs> let me, um, let me fix some of these here so that I can, I can work it out. So give me a second. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry. I am back. And now we're going to like really, really dive in. I had to give more room so I could show you these cards. So now we're looking at where the actual, uh, rainbow is behind the person. Okay. So it's a lot of interesting energy where the rainbow is behind things, okay? So we're just going to try to um to put them all in here so that you can you can see them, which is which is a feat all of itself, okay? So here's some court cards, those aren't court cards. Let's start let's do the court cards above here, okay? 
So we're going to do the major arcanas right there. We're going to do some court cards. I'm just going to put them behind. That way you can kind of um, see some of them, okay? That way you can kind of see where things are at, okay? There's that part. And then the rest of these are the minor arcana. So let's start off with major arcana and the court cards. So you could see how behind these energies play into these energies. You've got your different perspective, right? And you're looking at you're looking at a knight and two kings, okay? Uh, two very different kings, okay? So that definitely plays into your different perspective. You've got the magician and you've got two kings here that play into the magician really well, but that knight energy plays into magician too because you have to have creativity. You have to have that kind of um fire in order to even play into magician stuff, right? If you go into the fool side, this uh this knight plays into the fool really well too because do you think that he's like doing that all in a safe way? Probably not. He's got a spear there. His face is covered. He's not super super confident, but kind of confident, right? And then you've got the fool energy that plays into these. Like you can't get here without having that fool energy. You cannot get to a king without having that fool energy, okay? So there's that to consider, right? Then you go even further to play things off. You have the four of wands, right? Which is, this is your, uh, your like your building block, right? It's also a really happy card where your magician's a building block. Your hanged man's a building block. Your fool's a building block. Your two kings are building blocks. That knight is even a building block. Then you have the seven of pentacles. That's behind the seven of pentacles. He's not even looking at it. None of these guys are looking at their rainbow, right? But he's obviously a hard worker. And you have to have the hard work in order to even play into these. Then you've got the aces, right? These aces that are here, these aces are super important because those are all four energy that plays right into the magician as we talked about because you need all four of these in order to reach that master level of anything, right? But that's your beginning, that's your start, that's your fool too because you can't have you can't have that master level without being fool enough to take that first step, yeah? Yeah? All right, and then we're going to go even further. You've got the 2 of swords, right, which is your decision making. You've got the 10 of wands and you've got the two of wands and you've got the three of cups. Now this celebration card, this other people card, that's important if you want to be master level. If you want to reach a level where you go from, from being the fool, clear into the magician, clear into this king energy and knight energy where you're confident in what you're doing and what you're, what you're exploring. And this one right here, this two of wands, this is behind him. He is, it's not in front of him, right? It's behind him and that's the world that that rainbows on which brings like a whole new thing that comes into this right <laughs> because the world card actually doesn't have the um rainbow behind it it has the rainbow beneath it and then this guy right here all these burdens and then the rainbows in the background he's also not seeing the rainbow he's not even looking at the rainbow so there's a lot a whole lot of not paying attention to the rainbow there's a whole lot of um really heavy energy with that rainbow behind them. It's almost like that rainbow's like spurring all this stuff on. So I find that really, really interesting. And you can do that in different ways because the rainbow is set up in different ways throughout the cards. So that is, that is my kind of like mini deep dive into this tarot deck and how you can explore it because all of these cards can play off of each other. So if you got really good at it, these cards playing off major arcana and a reading, right? You, like I showed you before, like how dark that rainbow is can also play into which card it would be better associated with. And are all of these going the same direction? They pretty much are. This one goes, these two do not go the same direction. So even if these two cards were in in the same reading, I wouldn't read them the same way. They're not playing off of each other. It's almost like they're playing opposite of each other, right? Isn't that interesting? On the world card, I think it's just like everywhere. So I think this one could just mingle with any of them, actually. <laughs> and then you have your, your sideways, you know, hangman card that we already discussed. But it's really interesting to see how these rainbows play out. And I would be interested to work more with this on a reading level because I really think that it has a whole ton of of potential to really explore here. So yeah, that was my mini um, deep dive into tarot at the end of the rainbow. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. I hope that um, it inspires you to try something new within your decks 
uh, to see how things might play off each other in a, in a much deeper way. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a very great day.